Well, hello again, and welcome to the Rollins Reviews YouTube channel. Hope that you all had a nice uh, work week. All right. Um, I hope that some of you are familiar with Miss uh, Daisy Bates. Um, again, uh, I, you know, read about her and, you know, watched several documentaries documenting, you know, how she, um, you know, helped the Little Rock Nine. How you doing, Terry? Good to see you. Um, and so for those that don't know, how you doing, Tina? Uh, those people who don't know, Reese, hello, how's everyone doing? Uh, next Sunday, I decided to actually do a video on uh, the Little Rock Nine. If you're familiar with the Little Rock Nine, please indicate that in the chat section, okay? So um, we know that's when uh, schools, uh, of course, you know, the historic Brown versus Board of Education came down 1954. However, schools, particularly in the Southern states, were still unwilling to follow the law and desegregate. So uh, like we said before, and we talked about there's some people in some civil rights moments and uh, topics that all of us are familiar with. But sometimes when you dig a little deeper, you find out even more. And that uh, that's what I did. I um, did a little more reading and I was like, wow, you know, you think you know everything about everyone. And then you start, do, you know, going to different yeah. websites and you find out even more. And uh, that's what happened. So I just wanted to share that with you. And and we'll go from there. How you doing, Jermaine? OK, uh, hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your busy Sunday schedule. Uh, just to spend a few moments here, you know, we're not going to stay particularly long. If you're familiar with um, uh, Daisy Bates, please indicate that in the chat section. So again, I did a little more digging since, um, how you doing, Dan? Dan's here. Everyone say hello to Dan. Uh, wanted to learn just a little bit more about Daisy Bates. I've seen her picture. I've seen so many documentaries. How you doing, Mo Dallas? Uh, and so I just wanted to um, delve into uh, her history a little bit more. And I found out, like, you know, we always do whenever we start digging a little bit more, those people did so much more than we ever knew. Uh, you know, again, I've seen her forever in all the documentaries. And so, yeah, so she was more than just a civil rights advocate. Um, she was also a publisher. At one point, she and her husband owned their own newspaper. She was a journalist, a lecturer. How you doing, Janice? Uh, hello, glad to have you here. So she did so much. Um, so... Um, those of you just coming in, let me know if you're familiar with Daisy Bates already. You may have seen her if you've looked at some of the old black and white uh, footage uh, from the civil rights movement. You may say, oh, yeah. Um, uh, if you look at the picture, uh, the thumbnail that I have, she may look familiar because she's been in so many of the documentaries where um, the civil, the um, Little Rock Nine uh, <clears throat> were being discussed. So I did not know. Of course, she was the leading figure, but uh, I did not know, you know, she had such a tumultuous uh, background. All right, let me stop this right here. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm trying to, I got one of my computers here that are sort of going rogue. All right, there we go. Uh, so um, she was born in, uh, what is it, Hudding, uh, Arkansas? And if you're familiar with Arkansas, how you doing, Rhonda? And I uh, did not know. This is what I found out. I, I didn't know. Her mother was murdered, raped and murdered when she was like uh, very young. Um, she was at, actually she was an infant. And, you know, she the, she went to stay with some of her parents, uh, good friends. And she didn't find out what really happened to her mother until she was like eight years old. So that's got to be traumatizing. And, you know, she, you know, just when she got older, she just started to resent and hate uh, people of the white race. And, um, you know, there was some uh, men, I forgot, it was like a commissary type facility. 
And there was one in particular and she would go, this was very interesting when I read this. And of course we know the routine. We know that the killers were never found. They were never prosecuted. No one of course ever went to jail. That's nothing new, but and the sad part is when this happened and she went to live with her mother's friend, she never saw her father again. Okay. So uh, that part, uh, but she went to stay with her mother's friends, uh, Louis and uh, Orly and Susie Smith were their names. And they really shaped her life. And it was because of um, her stepfather, well, that's what I'll call him, uh, or Mr. Orly Smith. He's the one who told her, you, you can't walk around with this hate. Um, it will destroy you. Of course, he was right. Um, and it was very interesting. At such a young age, she would go uh, to the, the commissary and she would just stare at this man that she knew was involved. And she would just stare at him and she really wouldn't say anything. And he was just drinking himself to death, basically. How you doing, Patricia? And um, in uh, some of my reading, it said that Finally, this man couldn't take it anymore. And he was like, God, please, uh, leave, you know, said this to her, please leave me alone. And eventually, like I said, he drank himself to death and he was found dead in some alleyway. Um, and so finally, she, she finally started to take what her stepfather told her in stride and realized, you, you know, that wasn't the way to go. She decided to turn that hate into activism. So, um, she got married in 1952 to L.C. Bates, okay? And 1952 is when she was elected to be president of the uh, Arkansas NAACP, one of the branches. So we know that was very significant, okay? And, okay, there we go, uh, right? And so um, Daisy Bates, uh, at that time, now, you and I know... So, We've seen several documentaries. We've talked about some of these issues. Uh, we know what happens, what happened at that time. If you became black or white, uh, if you became involved with, you know, how you doing, end of the bitch? Uh, if you became involved with any type of civil rights activities, you know, your businesses, homes could be bombed, you could be murdered, all kinds of things, uh, awful things happen. Uh, to people who became uh, involved in the civil rights movement. So we know nothing new to see here, same old type of stuff. Um, so what happened afterwards, okay, there we go. So what happened afterwards, uh, she um, and her husband moved to Little Rock, okay? And we know this is where everything jumped off, okay? And um, at the time, uh, when they moved to Little Rock, they both had a dream uh, where they both wanted to start their own newspaper. So they were entrepreneurs. They actually started their own newspaper. And they, those of you who are uh, familiar with the Chicago Defender, I actually am going to do a video on the Chicago Defender and its significance um, in the civil rights movement and the crisis, which is, of course, the NAACP newspaper. And um, so once they started, they were doing well. Uh, they talked about, obviously, civil rights topics. She was deeply involved in efforts to desegregate, uh, you know, everything that was segregated at the time. Now, if you remember, the governor at that time was Orville Farbus, and, you know, he was not going to allow uh, integration, okay? Uh, and so um, what happened was, as president of the NAACP, she became the face of the integration movement. Now, again, how you doing, sugar daddy? All right. Okay. you uh, Guy, how you doing? Everyone's coming on over. Come on in, guys. If you are already familiar with Daisy Bates, please let me know. Hi, Guy. Glad to have you. Um, and so let me know. And, uh, we, I, you know, you can go back and catch the replay when you have time. We're just talking. I talked a little bit about her, you know, upbringing. I didn't know, you know, she came from such tragic circumstances. Okay. And so, um, she actually had excellent organizational skills. I didn't know she was like a community organizer. She, I mean, she had done so much. She used those organizational skills to plan for the nine students. And uh, if, you, if you've seen, those of you just coming in, if you've seen any documentaries on the Little Rock Nine, please indicate that um, in the chat section. Uh, and let me know, just from looking at my thumbnail, if you're already familiar with 
Miss Daisy Bates. And she was a pivotal figure in the um, civil rights movement. Um, I found out she had worked for the, um, this was later in life, she moved to Washington. She worked for the uh, Democratic National Committee. I didn't know she worked in President Johnson's administration on poverty programs. So again, when you start reading and researching, you found out, wow, you, you know, there are only one or two things you may know or be familiar with them doing. And then you find five, 10, 15 more. So that just makes you, you know, love and honor them even more. And uh, we know she was an advocate. She was a mentor for all of, of the students and, you know, the Little Rock uh, Nine students. And that was some scary, scary stuff, folks, because their lives were threatened. And I didn't know um, until I write Sugar Daddy. Uh, what do you think about that? I know you're going to leave me a comment. You know, her life was threatened on a daily basis. Uh, again, I told you, her, she and her husband, those of you just coming in, they started their own newspaper. And then, you know, advertisers, once they pull their advertising, they shut them down. They, she had, they had to go out of business. They put, a list was published uh, with the people who were involved with the NAACP. And we all know. Uh, anyone, it doesn't matter your race, you would lose your job, you could lose your life. So, you know, th that's okay. That didn't stop she and her husband. They continued. Um, and I found this out. This is a national landmark. In 2002, her home uh, became a national historic landmark. Um, so if you're ever in Arkansas, Little Rock, see if you can stop by there and check it out. Um, and uh, from looking at the documentaries, you know that's where the Little Rock Nine would gather. So uh, again, I was just reading um, about, you know, I didn't know she had written a, mem a memoir, <clears throat> excuse me, called The Long Shadow of Little Rock. And as always, if you look at the bottom of my uh, videos in the description box, I've shared a few links. Those of you just coming in, please make sure you're here next Sunday. Now, I know my guys are going to be looking at football, but just stop in for a few minutes and let me know what you think. Next uh, Sunday will be the 65th anniversary of the Little Rock Nine students integrating Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. So I definitely want to, you know, talk about that next Sunday and its significance and sort of compare it to where we are today. As, as it relates to public education, uh, <clears throat> basically everything that we hear is, uh, on public education is negative, unfortunately. Um, so be it, uh, you know, uh, of course, there's always room for improvement. Um, me being, you know, in the public school system for 25 years, I, I definitely can say some things <laughs> positive as well as negative. And so uh, just wanted to share that with you. I'm not going to keep you long. I know my guys got to get back to their football. Um, yes, Reese. And guys, if you enjoy this content, share this on your Facebook, your Instagram pages. The more people we bring to the conversation, the more I enjoy it. I feed off of it. Patricia says, that is so true. Once you start digging, there is so much history that we don't know about since civics are not taught in schools anymore. Right, Patricia? Now, some schools have it, but uh, again, it depends on what is in the curriculum. And we know uh, some things have been taken out of the curriculum because they might hurt someone's feelings. Oh, give me a break. So, yeah. So if you get a chance, check out the uh, links, you know, websites and then links from YouTube so you can learn a little bit more about Daisy Bates. She was awesome. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I didn't know she had done all of this. So you, you just learn so much more. Thank you, Reese. And, and so, again, we need to, I know we complain about the schools and the curriculum, but, you know, again, instead of us, you know, playing on our phones or listening to music, sometimes we need to be learning and researching things. Sugar Daddy says she spoke at the bar. Right, Sugar Daddy. Sugar Daddy, you need to come on and be on my panel one day. Sugar Daddy knows about all this stuff already. 
She spoke at the March on Washington. Yeah, so she's done a lot. Sugar Daddy, did you know she'd been, a, you know, a community organizer and worked in the Johnson administration? I didn't know all that until I did my research. I'm like, oh my God, you know, I, you know, and I've watched uh, just about every documentary. I've watched movies. I've read about the Little Rock Nine and the desegregation of Central High School. So I was shocked, you know, wow. So um, that's pretty much all, folks. Um, please make sure you're here next Sunday so we can talk about the Little Rock Nine. All of them, with the exception of one, are still alive. Only one is deceased, okay? And so um, I don't know if any of you have seen any of the movies on, you know, the Little Rock Nine. I actually have the Eyes on the Prize uh, series, which are several videotapes. Yes, I know I'm aging myself, about... Um, you know, the civil rights movement with Dr. King and Malcolm X, with everyone, uh, black and white, who was involved with the civil rights movement. And I still have those videotapes. I keep saying I'm going to order the uh, DVDs. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. All right. You know what time it is? Is that time of the show where it is time for me to find some winners? If you are still here, say I am here. I'm going to spin the wheel and we're going to see if we can get three winners today. Okay. All right, let's see. Rhonda's here. Okay, who else is here? Mo Dollars is here. Janice is here. Okay. Cherry, I need to add your name. Okay. I'm spinning a wheel, guys. Okay. B Sugar's not here. Uh, people who are not here, uh, you have to be here to win. So I'll, if, if it lands on someone's name who's... Daniel, you are a winner, okay? And I'm going to spin again. Dan is a winner. Everyone's still here? Good deal. Okay, I Love Weed is not here. I'm going to spin it again, guys. BT is not here, so I'm going to keep going. So, Daniel, you're the first winner. All right, Reese, I know you're here. Reese is a winner. I need one more winner. All right, I don't think Joyce is here. Terry is here, okay. Rhonda, are you still here? All right. Those are my three winners. And I'm pretty sure that uh, you guys that won, uh, have won before in the past. Uh, you know how we do. Oh, I forgot. Uh, you play your little cash register. That's for you, Daniel. That's for you, Rhonda. That's for you, uh, Reese, okay? Uh, congratulations to all the winners. You know how we do when I end the live stream. All you need to do is leave me a comment uh, in the comment section, and then you'll see a little gift in your, um, here we go. You'll see a little gift in your Cash App account, okay? Thank you all for coming. Please come out next Sunday so that we can have um, a little conversation about the 65th anniversary of the integration of uh, Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. Okay? Thank you, everyone, for spending your very valuable time with the Rollins Reviews YouTube channel. And I hope to see you. Yes, Sugar Daddy, I can't wait. Um, yes, she is. Sugar Daddy, you, you, you're good on all that knowledge. I tell you, I want you to come on here and uh, talk to us one day. All right. I hope to see you all next Sunday. Be safe. And uh, I enjoyed all of you. Thank you again for joining the Rollins of Views YouTube channel.